You know, one of the truly beautiful things about sports betting is it can take the most mundane type of events and turn them into a riveting movie. What movie have you watched where you felt like you were on the edge of your seat? Season four of Game of Thrones, you were on the edge of your seat the entire season. Well, if somebody doesn't understand sports betting, just let them know every single game we watch is the season finale in season four of Game of Thrones. Tywin Lannister is sitting on that toilet and Tyrion is pointing at him with a crossbow. That's what every game is. Doesn't matter what. That's why on this Monday night when we have to watch the Jets in primetime yet again, it's going to be that season four finale of Game of Thrones. Why? Because you guys got your tickets in there and there's nothing better than the sweat of knowing if Tyrion is going to pull the trigger or not, a.k.a. that over that we're one catch away from is going to hit on that final drive in the fourth quarter or hoping that it, the game orchestrates itself in a way that you get to overtime and then hit the over on your rushing attempts. That's a thrill, my friends. And we're going to try to find a couple thrills for you here on this Monday night. We got the Chargers going to New York to play the Jets. And this game has one of the spreads that I despise if I want to take a favorite Three and a half on the road is is just that recipe for disaster. So I do not particularly want to find myself on the minus three and a half side of any bet. I just despise that number. But I do like the Chargers to win this game. I mean, this Jets, I don't want to call it luck, but when you require a Hail Mary to Alan Lazar just to tie the game against Tommy DeVito and then go on to an overtime win... These wins, I think uh, they've been, the Jets have been a little more on the fortunate side of things, especially in that Giants game and in a game that the Chargers really need. I'm not going to, I'm not saying it's going to be pretty. Things are rarely pretty for them, but this is a game that I believe the Chargers will find a way to win. I'm okay going up to two and a half. Can't bring myself to taking three and a half. Almost ever. It's just an Andy philosophy. But why would you? Fine, you don't have to. I'm not asking you to join the philosophy. All I'm saying is I hate three and a half for a favorite on the road. I'll do two and a half. Don't ask me to go three and a half. It's like a guy asking for too much on that sticker price of a car. Come on, talk to me a little bit. Get me down to two and a half. Oh, we can get me down to two and a half. Well, we can get you down to two and a half, sir. But let me show you else what we got. We got some player props over here. We can knock your number down. We can find ways around it. We'll find some ways around it. Using one of my best friends out there, one of my, my handy assistant, Odd Shopper Premium, where all the best scientists at Area 51 are not only reverse engineering alien spacecraft, but they're also reverse engineering wins on NFL bets. And one that they like for this game right here is the under three and a half receptions for Quinton Johnston, the number one draft pick of the Chargers. Now, you might be thinking, but my guy just saw Palmer put on the IR. You're going to have Sauce Gardner on Keenan Allen, probably. Aren't there going to be ample opportunities here for Quinton Johnson? You'd like to think, yes, he's just shown no chemistry with Justin Herbert. It seems like for whatever reason, Herbert doesn't have faith in him the same way that he does Mike Williams and Keenan Allen and even Josh Palmer and even Gerald Everett and definitely Eckler out of the backfield. So... I, I got to agree with them on this one. Under three and a half catches for Quentin Johnston. If you want to take the over on his receiving yardage, what a wacky. Do you imagine that taking the under on his receptions, but the over on his receiving yardage? Because he's the kind of guy that I feel like might be able to do that. Stretch the field vertically like a DK Metcalf game yesterday, one for 50 or something like that. But no, I, I do agree with the under three and a half receptions for Quentin Johnston. When I look at these primetime games, I see opportunities for certain aspects of the game. Like when you see the Bengals play the Bills, you go, oh, I see some alt-over opportunities here. T. Higgins, 
58 receiving yards that went over 100. You have Dalton Kincaid. He had over 10 catches. He went way over on his alt. Because those are two offenses that are going to be able to move the ball. Two quarterbacks who like to throw the ball. Bunch of weapons all over the field. This is different. You know the Jets are trying to win this in crusty fashion. So you're not going to see me take stabs in that regard. This is just not the game that, in my opinion, would call for it. So... I'm actually going to focus on the running backs. Normally, if it's a game that can blow up, I'll try to make extra money with the receivers. This time, I'm going down to the running backs because I do see some ample opportunities there. Number one, you want to start with the Jets side or Chargers side? How about we start with the Jets side of the ball? We know that Brees Hall, his snap count percentage is just through the roof now. They've been easing him back into the, into the season, coming off the torn ACL. His production has gone up every single week. Last week... Not really able to do much on the ground. He was able to break a long one through the air, which is why Odd Shopper Premium, Area 51, another one. Can I give you two? Don't tell him, but I'm going to give you another one. They really like the over on receiving yards for Brees Hall, but I'm on the under for the rushing yards. I know that he has the capability of busting one deep, but as you saw against the Giants, who couldn't stop Josh Jacobs one lick, that offensive line of the Jets is a major problem. It was a problem going into the season. It remains a big problem, if not an even bigger problem than it was to begin with. And he may get a bunch of carries. I don't have the faith that he's going to be able to, to break one for a long run, one that's going to get him there. I know he's going to get fed. So guess what? If you want an over on him on his rushing, the rushing attempts. I do like the over on his rushing attempts because they've demonstrated a consistent tendency to feed him the rock now that they feel like his body can withstand it. So weirdly enough, I know those things kind of go against each other. I believe he'll go over on his rushing attempts and under on his rushing yards, but over on his receiving yards, similar to what we saw last week. Okay, it's not working on the inside. Let's get him out in space, give him a couple opportunities on screens to maybe break one loose for a long gain or whatnot. So I'll go, I'll go over on rushing attempts, under on rushing yards for Brees Hall. This game has a three and a half point spread. What does that mean? The sports books project that it's going to be within one score. When it's in one, within one score, you can continue to run the ball. Both teams can continue to run the ball. Although the Chargers are always a little more prone to maybe sling it. You know, the Jets are going to keep running it. However, we saw Austin Eckler have his first really productive game last week where they were trying to get it going on the ground. Didn't really get it going on the ground, but obviously got it going through the air a ton. I believe he'll be able to get it going enough on the ground this week. I get that the Jets have a good defense. I get it. I believe, like Brees Hall, he will also go over on his rushing attempts. The fact that there's no Josh Palmer and no Mike Williams and they don't have a ton of trust in Johnston and Gardner will probably be on uh, Keenan Allen, you know, I don't know that for certain because they say that shadowing is, it, it's it's a weird stat. Like usually they don't travel all over the field and Keenan Allen goes to the inside, outside. So who knows if Gardner's going to be on him all game. But regardless, there's going to be a ton of opportunity for Austin Eckler. I believe they know that Austin Eckler is going to have to be a key contributor to this win. I believe he's going to go over on his rushing yards and over on his rushing attempts. He was coming back from injury last week, got a significant amount of, of carries and catches or total touches, let's say. And Josh Kelly, I don't think is breaking anything deep against this Jets D. Obviously, Barkley needed like 36 carries to get over 100, but the Giants offensive line is a whole different ball game that we're talking about. But I like him to go over on his rushing yards and over on his carries. And th th there's an assortment of things you can take in there. You want to combine any of them, put them together. You want to take singles. You want to take doubles. You want to do a same game. Parlay. Then you can do so at Bet365, where you'll have $150 in free bet credits to use on this game. As long as you're a new user over there, you sign up, make a $10 deposit, you bet five, you get $150 in free bet credits to use on whatever you want. Now you click the link in the description of this video, there are three separate links, one for US users, one for Canada users or Canadian users, and one for other international users. But remember, like I said, you gotta be over 21 and in a state or province where sports betting is permitted. And if you or anybody you know has a gambling problem, make sure you call 1-800-GAMBLER or make sure if you're Gen Z, you text 1-800-GAMBLER. Somebody will help you out with those problems and point you in the right direction. Hopefully we pointed you in the right direction for today's game. 
Let's see how it goes. I think that, you know, the Jets are riding this little winning streak here, but the Chargers kind of need you. They saw every team that they're kind of chasing this week. Wait, they're chasing the Steelers. They're chasing the Bengals. They obviously are looking up one spot at the Jets. They saw the Browns win. Weirdly a must win for these Chargers, even though they're still early in the season. But as these AFC teams keep racking up wins, you cannot fall too far behind. And it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. I don't know. In my opinion, the Jets, I don't want to call it luck because, you know, but the Eagles win that pick six, like at the end of the game. And last week, the Hail Mary, this is, this is a series of fortunate circumstances. I don't know. Maybe Aaron Roberts, Aaron Roberts, Aaron Rodgers has like some sort of voodoo witchcraft where he's making this happen so he can come back and have that dramatic comeback. I'm a Rodgers guy, so that'd be great to see. I don't know, though, but it seems like their luck is is slated to run out tonight, especially after the Chargers look so good, albeit against the Bears last week. But we will see how this one goes. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. Make sure you subscribe here to the Odd Shopper channel, and we'll be back with you before Thursday night football. We will talk to you then. Take it easy.